So this is Mine Expo 2021 here in Las Vegas. We are at the Caterpillar booth, as you can see, and I'm standing in front of an all new underground loader that Caterpillar is debuting at this show. And the thing about going to a show full of new mining equipment is that beyond doing a lot of looking up at all of the new giant mining machines on display, you also get to look into the future. Well, the future as it pertains to construction equipment, at least. See, the R1700 XE is a first of its kind machine. For starters, there's no engine inside of this machine. It's completely battery powered. And beyond it being cool that this is a battery powered machine that does the type of work that this machine does in the environment that it does, perhaps even more important is the mobile charging system that Caterpillar has developed for this machine. That mobile charging system, you're looking at it. This is the MEC500, a mobile fast charging system that Caterpillar says can charge up that R1700XE in 20 minutes. You can't even charge a Tesla that fast. Now that is a game changer level of advancement for electrification, no matter what vehicle or industry we're talking about. And you're probably even asking how it's all even possible. And we're definitely going to get into that because while a battery powered R1700 XE is going to make a huge impact on mining operations around the world, we've also seen trickle down effect over the last 10 years or so as technology developed for mining sites and equipment has made its way into construction sites and equipment. So the R1700 XE could actually represent a major paradigm shift in the way that heavy equipment is sold, powered, and service. All right, but before we get into all the juicy battery details, let's get some basic information out of the way. The R1700 XE is built on the same platform as its predecessor, the R1700G. It's got the same linkage geometry, the same 16 and a half tons of payload capacity, and the same 11 mile per hour top speed. In fact, just about all of the common components that you're gonna find from the linkage all the way up to the end of the bucket on this new machine, the R1700 XE, are the same that you're gonna find on its predecessor, the R1700. G. But it's not all carryover. For starters, CAT has made changes to the chassis of the machine to improve durability. They've revamped the component positioning and they've made improvements to the cab, including a new HVAC system and reduced noise and vibration levels. All right, but what about that battery? Well, right here in the back of the machine is a lithium ion phosphate battery pack that CAT says has a 213 kilowatt hour capacity. It's maintenance free, fully enclosed, and liquid cooled, offering FOPS level two protection. Now, just for reference, a Tesla Model S can be equipped with a 100 kilowatt hour battery, while that new GMC Hummer, that giant new pickup that GMC is putting out here at the end of the year, that truck packs a 200 kilowatt hour power unit. And we, we don't typically name who's actually sourcing the actual battery cells themselves, right? But as we looked at it, you know, the first thing we started with though was with our industry team, with our group of engineers, with our group of field performance you know, team to understand the requirements in an underground environment. And when we look at safety, we look at reliability, we look at durability. And while we don't produce the battery cells themselves, you know, we work in terms of how you string them together, how you package them, how you cool them, how you maintain them. And then also the, you know, it's integrated into our technology strategy in terms of how that's all managed. It's important for us to maintain that, that focus on the overall performance so that as battery chemistries evolve, as battery technologies evolve, we're able to facilitate changing of the battery technology, but still within the same performance, safety, you know, reliability envelope that we've designed on the machine. So Caterpillar says the battery on board this machine can actually power it from anywhere between two and a half to four hours. It all kind of depends on how hard you run the machine, but it can also depend on kind of your charging strategy around it. You know, you're looking at how much battery capacity on board, right? So what's, how much runtime is ideal? Because you can put more battery capacity on board, but now you're putting more load on your tires. Now you're potentially impacting your payload. You can put less battery capacity on board, maybe get other performance, but now you need more charge time. So, you know, the, the first piece of machinery that goes in is a drill. And so, you know, they will drill and blast in an area. And in a lot of cases where you first blasted that material, that roof is now, it's not yet supported with, with a roof bolter. And so we call it mucking. And this loader is coming in and quickly getting as much of that material out of that area as fast as possible. Because a lot of cases you'll, the production loader will move that material and put it to a second location. And then you'll have another loader that does rehand handling and maybe it moves that material to a truck, maybe it moves it to a crusher or to a grizzly, but it's a prime production machine. Uh, we call them LHDs, it's a load haul dump. So if, you're, if your distance is short enough, in some cases this loader will load the material
material, it will tram and it will dump the material directly into a grizzly or a hopper or a crusher. You don't even need, you know, trucks in those underground operations. Other operations, this machine will then load a truck. The partner to this machine is the AD45. If you have a longer haul, do you have to move your material? And so working with our customers on that economic and performance modeling and that total cost of ownership where you're balancing productivity and cost to really get that optimum equation for their operation. But wait, you're probably thinking two and a half to four hours, that's it? That's not nearly enough runtime. Well, Cat agrees with you. Which is exactly why they created this, the MEC 500. This is a first of its kind, fast charging, portable charging system that Caterpillar has created at first for the R1700 XE. Kind of think about it in the same way that we think about the uh, little portable battery chargers that we can connect to our iPhones and tablets that we carry around to top up our devices whenever they need it. Rather than having you swap out the actual battery pack in the R1700 XE, the 3,500 pound MEC 500 can be lifted, lowered, or drug into position right alongside the loader. And once the MEC 500 is in place, you connect a charging cable to the machine and power it on with the press of a button. But here's the real kicker. Cat has made it possible to connect two MEC 500 units to the back of the R1700 XE at the same time, providing a full recharge to the machine in just 20 minutes. In fact, even if you only connect one MEC 500 unit, it still recharges the machine in 30 minutes or less. And you can keep track of your remaining time left in the recharge with an easy to read color display right on the unit. Now with 500 kilowatt hours of capacity on board each MEC unit, there's enough power in each of these mobile batteries to recharge an R1700 XE two times over. Which allows us two and a half hours of aggressive runtime, you know, between charges. Now, we've seen in some applications, if the run, if the performance is not as aggressive or difficult, we can see up to four hours. But in fact, in some cases, we've actually seen us go an entire shift without a dedicated charge cycle. One of the things that we're seeing is people taking advantage of what they're calling opportune charge time. If there's a delay in the operation, even if it's only a five minute delay or a three minute delay, the fact that the charger is mobile, you can move the charger with the machine, you can connect the charger and get a little top up. Two minute top up, three minute top up, it's amazing to see a couple of those quick top ups and you can just keep on working through your shift. The other thing we've observed is, you know, a number of our customers have a operator fatigue management system. You know, underground's difficult, underground's hard, and running these machines is you know, a lot more difficult than driving your car on the highway. So it's not uncommon to see our operators take a break every couple of hours. Well, if they're going to take a break, connect the machine to the charger, take advantage of that. And so you, we really don't see significant downtime due to charging if they're taking advantage of all those opportune moments. And beyond the fact that a mobile fast charging system like the MEC 500 can get your RX 1700, a machine of that size, back up and running with a full charge in just 20 minutes, beyond the fact that that's just pretty cool on its own, it's also less taxing on a mine site's overall electric infrastructure. I mean, if you look at uh, going deeper in an operation, one of the most significant costs to going deeper is in your ventilation and the investment that's required to keep fresh, key, clean, cool air coming underground. If you're able to reduce your diesel emissions with a zero emissions battery machine, significantly reduces the amount of ventilation you know, required, which in some cases now makes non-viable assets you know, more viable. The other part of the equation though is also ensuring that you're able to hit your production targets. Because of the significant capital investment early on, you need to get to that first ore and that production even faster as well. And so that's the other exciting thing about the 1700 is that there is no compromise in performance that we're able to maintain the industry leading performance that we have, the payload, the cycle times uh, to get to that production faster at the lower cost. A lot of our underground customers already have a lot of electrical infrastructure. You know, the, the fact that the charger is portable and mobile, you know, so we can lower it down into the shaft, pick it up with a forklift, drag the charger around, you know, wherever you go. You still need to connect to the charger to your grid infrastructure, you know, on a, on a periodic basis, but it provides that, you know, flexibility where you don't have a fixed charging station. Uh, and the other thing with the batteries too, with the batteries contained within the machine, you know, you're not having to deal with spare and replacement batteries. And with this innovative new machine and charger package, CAT has also come up with a new way to purchase or lease this equipment. 
For starters, you can buy the machine through Cat Financial and then lease the machine's onboard battery separately for a certain time period. Now, once that period is up, usually around two years, Cat actually removes the battery from the machine, swaps in a new one, and then recycles the old one. Cat is also providing financing support for the MEC 500 charging units. The thing is, I've covered electric heavy equipment pretty extensively over the last few years, and, and I'll be honest, I didn't see technology like Cat has put together here with the MEC 500, the R1700 XC, and, and granted, most of the time I'm covering construction equipment, this is a piece of mining equipment, but it doesn't really matter. This is a similarly sized piece of equipment to what you'd see on a construction site. It's doing similar things that happen on a construction site in a more rugged environment. It has a battery size that would be probably appropriate for a construction size piece of equipment. And this charging system can charge it up in less than 20 minutes. There's no way that I saw something like this hitting the market this soon. This is an astounding piece of technology and an astounding piece of engineering for the time that we're living in right now. And it's probably a really good example of what you can expect and another way that mach electric machines are going to be able to be deployed and powered in the near future, not just on mining sites, but on construction sites as well. Because if a 213 kilowatt hour battery can provide up to four hours of runtime for a machine that works as hard as this one, it can very likely power a wide range of equipment aimed at construction for that time period as well. And the thing about that four hour runtime, that up to four hour runtime, is that it hurts a lot less if the recharge times only take 20 minutes or so. You can recharge the machine on your break or in downtime on the job. There's lots of things that you can do in terms of strategy and recharging to make this machine viable, not just in the future, but today. But here's the other thing. By the time that this technology actually trickles down into construction equipment, I would imagine that the charging times will be faster and the battery life will be even longer. Also worth mentioning on that MEC, CAT plans to build support into these charging units for other machines. So eventually you'll be able to use them to power all sorts of equipment. We are so excited about what we have here. And really this development program was actually three development programs. So there was the XC for the electric drive. There was the battery development program for the machine. And then there was the charger program for the MEC 500. All three of those programs are able to be leveraged across the Caterpillar enterprise. If you think about the diesel electric XE, right? We're showing our R2900 XE, which is a diesel electric loader, but we leverage those XE components. Same thing with our XE dozer that we're showing here. We have an XE, you know, wheel loader. Uh, and then yes, this charger, you know, this charger will be able to use for any of our Caterpillar machines. We believe that this charger can be used on non-Caterpillar machines as well, and that the customer will be able to leverage it for other fleet that they have. We don't produce a drill, but you know, they could utilize our charger if that drill, you know, is electrified. So um, we are absolutely excited about this program. I mean, it's the first of many, you know, to come. And, and probably the other piece of the equation, so we've talked a lot about electrification here, but there's the, you know, there's the automation element as well as we, as we move forward in terms of this roadmap and supporting our customers. And, and where do we go from line of sight to tele-remote to, you know, semi-automation to full automation for our customers as we continue to help them, you know, uh, more economically, you know, mine all around the world. Now, the R1700 XE is currently still in testing and development with three units deployed at mining sites in Canada, one of which has a thousand operating hours under its belt. The R1700 XE and the MEC500 charging units are slated for release in early 2022. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. That is going to wrap it up here at Mine Expo 2021 in the Caterpillar booth with the R1700 XE. Thank you again so much for watching the video. We always appreciate your time. If you want more video coverage, more coverage of the construction industry, the mining industry, and heavy equipment, head on over to our website, forconstructionpros.com. Be sure to follow us on your social media channels of choice. Subscribe here on YouTube if that's where you're watching the video. We'll see you in the next one.